Urgent. Why did Jensen Huang rush to China? NVIDIA's China predicament and the global AI chip game Why did the US suddenly lift the ban on H20 chips? In the tech world, every move by NVIDIA draws significant attention. Recently, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang has been incredibly busy, frequently traveling between China and the US. In particular, his appearance at the Third China International Supply Chain Expo in a Tang suit and his efforts to speak Chinese were quite eye-catching. Why is he putting in so much effort? It turns out that NVIDIA's AI chip, the H20, has received export permission from the US government for shipment to China. This news instantly caused a stir in the industry. Don't underestimate the H20 chip, although it's a performance-restricted special edition, it's highly sought after in the Chinese market. However, after this supply cut incident, NVIDIA's position in the Chinese market isn't as comfortable as before. Local competitors are springing up like mushrooms after rain, putting immense pressure on NVIDIA. What kind of business secrets and international power struggles lie behind this? Let's delve into it. Let's first focus on the H20 chip. The supply cut incident regarding the H20 dates back to April of this year, when NVIDIA disclosed on April 15 that they had received notification from the US government on April 9 that exporting the H20 to China would require government permission. The H20 was originally a special edition chip custom designed by NVIDIA for the Chinese market. Previously, based on the A100 and H100 chips, NVIDIA developed the A800 and H800, known as the 800 series chips, specifically for the Chinese market. However, in the fourth quarter of 2023, the US government tightened its AI chip export policy to China, and the 800 series chips were banned from sale. NVIDIA had no choice but to quickly launch the H20 in the first quarter of 2024. But its performance was further restricted, with peak computing power only 15% of the H100. Even this downsized H20 is based on the older Hopper architecture, a significant gap compared to NVIDIA's latest Blackwell architecture chips. Despite this, the H20 has become NVIDIA's main sales driver in China. Why? Because NVIDIA's other chip sold in China, the L20, is two generations behind the latest architecture. IDC data shows that NVIDIA accounted for 65.2% of the domestic data center computing power market last year. This is enough to demonstrate that, in the past, NVIDIA's position in the Chinese market was quite solid. From the perspective of the US government, restricting chip exports was intended to hinder China's AI development. But what was the result? As Jensen Huang himself said, US export controls have instead strengthened the global competitiveness of Chinese chip manufacturers. This is like trying to keep an opponent out, only for them to build an even more luxurious house outside the door. The US government's approval of H-20 exports also has its own agenda. US Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo stated, We don't sell them the best stuff, not the second best, not even the third best. I think the fourth best is what we consider acceptable. China is fully capable of developing chips independently, and what the US needs to do is stay one step ahead of China's self-developed level, so that China will continue to buy American chips. This wishful thinking sounds good, but can reality truly unfold as they desire? Historical experience shows that such technological blockades often backfire. In the past, the US suppressed Japan's semiconductor industry, restricting Japanese chip exports to the US and forcing Japan to sign various unequal agreements. Japan's semiconductor industry was indeed severely hit, but it also prompted Japanese companies to increase R&D investment, achieving technological breakthroughs in some areas. For example, in semiconductor materials and equipment, Japan still holds an important position. Will U.S. chip restrictions on China also lead China down a similar path of independent technological innovation? Let's look at NVIDIA again. To maintain revenue in the Chinese market, the H20 is crucial. 
The frantic rush by major domestic manufacturers for the H20 before the ban was announced in April clearly shows how high the domestic demand for this chip is. Due to the H20 export restrictions to China, NVIDIA incurred expenses of up to $4.5 billion in the first fiscal quarter of this year due to H20 inventory. This expenditure caused NVIDIA's gross margin for the quarter to plummet to 61%, a sequential decrease of 12.5 percentage points and a year-on-year -year decrease of 16.9 percentage points. NVIDIA also stated that if this impact were excluded, the gross margin for the first fiscal quarter could have reached 71.3%. In addition, $2.5 billion worth of H20S could not be delivered, with a total revenue impact of approximately $7 billion for the quarter. Furthermore, as a special edition ship for the Chinese market, it's difficult for the H20 to find sales channels in other markets. This series of data indicates that the Chinese market is NVIDIA's lifeline. Once the Chinese market is lost, NVIDIA's revenue and profits will suffer severe blows. This also explains why Jensen Huang is so anxious, frequently visiting China and emphasizing the importance of the Chinese market on various occasions. After the H20 received export permission, Jensen Huang stated, After the announcement yesterday, I haven't had a chance to meet with any customers yet. It will take some time to increase the production capacity of the H20 supply chain, and NVIDIA will work hard to accelerate this process in the coming months. I hope to introduce more advanced chips to China. In the coming years, as long as we are allowed to sell to China, we will do so. However, the H20's return to the Chinese market faces a much more complex competitive landscape than before. Domestic AI chip manufacturers have long seized the opportunity for domestic substitution. For example, Huawei launched its CloudMatrix 384 SuperNotus NAI cloud service on June 20 based on 384 of Huawei's most advanced Ascen AI chips and 192 Ascen CPU chips interconnected. Huawei claims its overall capability benchmarks against NVIDIA's H100 released in 2022. Due to limited access to advanced process technology, domestic AI chip manufacturers have turned to the cluster product route. Huawei founder Rin Zhengfei stated that there is no need to worry about chip issues, as methods like stacking and clustering can achieve computing results comparable to the most advanced levels. Since the ban on NVIDIA's 800 series chips in the fourth quarter of 2023, domestic manufacturers have more actively turned to domestic GPU solutions. More threads and MedAx are typical examples, their revenues soared from 121 million yuan and 51.41 million yuan respectively in 2023 to 432 million yuan and 742 million yuan in 2024, with AI computing revenue becoming the main source of income. The H20 export restriction incident this year has further accelerated the pace of independent R&D by domestic manufacturers. Tencent stated at an earnings call in May this year that it would simultaneously focus on imported and domestically available chips to ensure its AI strategy is not affected. This series of actions indicates that domestic AI chip manufacturers are prepared to embrace the wave of domestic substitution, no longer relying on imported chips as in the past. Compared to European and American countries, China's development in the AI chip field started relatively late, but its development speed is astonishing. Taking the United States as an example, NVIDIA dominates the US AI chip market but also faces challenges from competitors like Intel and AMD. Intel, leveraging its advantages in the CPU field, is actively deploying in the AI chip market, launching a series of products to gain a share in AI inference and training. AMD has also increased R&D investment, and its GPU products are gradually approaching NVIDIA in performance. In Europe, some countries are also increasing their support for AI chip R&D, such as the UK's Graphcore company, which focuses on developing AI processors whose products have unique advantages in specific fields. However, the huge demand and policy support in the Chinese market enabled domestic AI chip manufacturers to develop rapidly. Numerous large domestic internet companies and scientific research institutions have strong demand for AI chips, 
providing broad application scenarios for domestic chips. The government has also introduced a series of policies to encourage the development of the chip industry, increase R&D investment, and cultivate professional talents. This dual-driven market and policy approach has enabled China's AI chip industry to make significant progress in just a few years. While the H20's return to the Chinese market still puts it ahead of most domestic AI chips, it faces considerable challenges. Yen Bo, head of the government services group at CCMC Research, believes that currently, the H20 will primarily focus on clearing inventory. Given the rich AI application scenarios and large demand for GPUs in China, if NVIDIA bundles the H20 with the B30 or other special edition chips for sale in the future, many domestic manufacturers will still lean towards choosing the H20. However, domestic demand-side companies, after experiencing the ban lift event, will adopt a multi-legged approach to reduce the risk of relying on a single supply chain. Manufacturers that have already adopted alternative chips like Huawei Ascend and Cambricon are expected to continue maintaining a certain proportion of domestic chip usage. But for end-user enterprises, the H20 has an advantage in its industrial ecosystem, which is one of the main challenges faced by domestic GPU manufacturers when launching alternative products. Building an industrial ecosystem is not an overnight task. NVIDIA, through years of development, has established a complete CUDA ecosystem, allowing software developers to develop various applications based on this ecosystem, giving NVIDIA's chips a clear advantage in software compatibility. To break this situation, domestic GPU manufacturers not only need to continuously improve chip performance but also need to increase investment in software ecosystem development, attracting more developers to participate and establishing their own software ecosystem. In summary, Jensen Huang's urgency reflects NVIDIA's simultaneous predicament and opportunity in the Chinese market. The unpredictable nature of the U.S. government's chip export policy has not only caused significant losses for NVIDIA but also brought development opportunities for China's AI chip industry. Against the backdrop of the global AI chip game, the importance of the Chinese market is self-evident. In the future, whether NVIDIA can stabilize its footing in the Chinese market and whether domestic AI chip manufacturers can seize the opportunity to achieve a breakthrough remains to be seen. If you are interested in the field of AI chips, feel free to follow us and explore the latest developments in technology together.